everyone welcome back to another video by simply learn in today's video we're going to learn about angular 10 well you must be aware that angular released a new version that is angular version 10 in the june of 2020 so in this video we're going to talk about the new improvements additions and deprecations that come with angular 10 but before we begin if you haven't subscribed to our channel already make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update from us. So now let's look at what's in store for us. First, we'll look at the previous Angular versions. Next, we'll look at what's new with Angular 10. And finally, I'll let you know how to update to Angular 10. First up, let's have a look at the previous Angular versions. Ever since its inception, Angular has been consistent with releasing new features in their versions. First up was Angular 1, then Angular 2, 4, however Angular 3 was skipped. There was Angular 5 and Angular 6, Angular 7, 8, 9 and finally in 2020 they released Angular 10. Angular 1.x, also known as AngularJS, was a JavaScript based open source front-end web application framework. Now it aimed at simplifying both the development and the testing of applications by providing a framework for client-side model view controller. It aims to simplify both the development and the testing of applications by providing a framework for model view controller and model view view model architectures. Next up, Angular 2 was released, which was written entirely in TypeScript. Angular 1.x was not built with mobile support in mind, whereas with Angular 2, it came with mobile support. Now, Angular 3 was skipped due to certain discrepancies. With Angular 4, the release was made backward compatible with 2.x.x for most of the applications. Now, there was no major change in Angular 4 from Angular 2. Next up was Angular 5. Now, Angular 5 version concentrated on making Angular smaller and faster to use. HTTP client library, build optimizer, and compiler improvements were made. With Angular 6, the Angular CLI was released. New commands like ng-update and ng-add were introduced. Now, Angular 7, released in October 2017, came with performance improvements and some interesting features like CLI prompts, virtual scrolling and drag and drops. With Angular 8 that was released in 2019, features like builder APIs, web worker support and dynamic imports to name a few were introduced. Also features like IV renderer and Bazel were introduced. Moving on to Angular 9, is, this was released in February 2020. Now Angular 9 came up with the most awaited IV compiler. Now its advantages were faster testing, better debugging, improved CSS class and style binding, improved type checking, improved build errors, improved build times, and improved internationalization. It came with better framework and Angular material. And now the latest version that is Angular 10 was released in June 2020. So now let's look at the new features of Angular 10 a little deeply. So what's new with Angular 10? First up, older versions of TypeScript are not supported. So the previous versions of Angular supported TypeScript 3.6, 3.7 and 3.8. But with Angular 10, TypeScript was bumped to the version 3.9, TSLib has been updated to version 2.0 and TSLint has been updated to version 6. Next up is warnings about common JS imports. Now, logging of unknown property bindings or elements which were previously warnings have been now increased to the error level. This change may have an effect on tools that are not expecting an error log. The most important update of all is that version 10 offers a new strict project setup when you create a new workspace with the ng new command. Now, generally you have the ng new project name command. However, you can have additional setting that is ng new strict setting. This flag initializes your new project with few new settings that improve maintainability, help you catch bugs ahead of time, and allow the CLI 
to perform advanced optimizations on your application. Specifically, the strict flag does the following. It enables strict mode in TypeScript. It turns template type checking to strict. It configures your app to be side effect free. Next up is the NGCC feature. Now with Angular 10, there has been an implementation of a program based entry point finder. So what exactly is an entry point finder? Now, this is a point where the first instructions of a program are executed. And this indicates that the program has access to the command line arguments. So with Angular 10, this feature has been implemented using a program based entry point finder. Now, this is designed to only process entry points that can be reached by a program defined by your config.json file. Next up is compiler update. In the latest Angular version, a compiler interface has been added in order to wrap the actual NGTSC compiler. Angular version 10 has added name spans for property reads and method calls. Next up is URL routing updation. Well, returning null from a URL matcher would throw the type null is not assignable to type URL match result before. This is fixed, but the return type can now be null too. Next up is deprecated APIs. Now Angular 10 has seen deprecation of ESM5 bundles, which saves up to 120 MB of download and install time while running Yarn or NPM install for Angular packages and libraries. We will also see a deprecation of older browsers, including Internet Explorer 9, 10, and Internet Explorer Mobile that are based on heavy consultation with the community. Next up is bug fixes. With this Angular 10 version, there have been a number of bug fixes that includes compiler avoiding undefined expressions in an array, the core avoiding a migration error when a non-existent symbol is being imported. Now another crucial bug fix ensures proper identification of modules affected by overrides in testbed. Next improvement is no default browser configuration. Now browser configuration for new projects have been updated to outdo older and less used browsers. One simply has to add the required browsers in the dot browser list file to enable ES5 builds and differential loading for browsers. Next up is core. All the warnings will now be locked in as errors. Now, generic has been made mandatory for module with providers. The next improvement is converting free IV code. Now, all the pre IV dependencies from NPM should be transformed to IV dependencies. Now, this is supposed to take place as a precursor for running NGTSC at the application. And lastly, we have service workers. Now, in the previous versions, there were situations where the service worker never got registered when there was a long running task or a recurring timeout. However, this error has been fixed in this version. Well, if you've worked extensively with Angular over the past couple of years and have now updated to the new version, then these improvements are way more visible. So for the ones who haven't updated, let me tell you how to update to Angular 10. Now you can go back to your command prompt and here run the command ng update at angular slash cli and at angular slash core. Now this must update your version to angular 10. It installs all the packages for tooling. This might take a while and once the installation is complete, you can go ahead and check for the version. Just type in the command ng hyphen version and there you go. It says version 10.0.4 so with that we conclude this video if you have any doubts or queries let us know in the comment section below so thank you so much for being here and watch out for more videos from us until then keep learning and stay tuned to simply learn hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified, click here.